Welcome back to Half Moon Tech Labs. In a previous video, I talked about how to change the bearings in John Deere sheaves or pulleys, your choice. John Deere calls them sheaves, so don't get too excited. That's I'm just using the term that John Deere used. <laughs> there was a lot of comments about sheaves versus pulleys versus idlers. Um, I'm just going by what the manufacturer calls them because the terms are used interchangeably a lot. But anyway, um, so specifically, we took this uh, bearing. I think this is a 6203. Uh, and I was talking about how you can get these pretty cheap. Uh, and there were a lot, there was a lot of discussion from folks. Yeah, 6203. Uh, so here I bought a, uh, like a 10 pack of these things and, uh, from an overseas supplier. Let's put it that way. Uh, and these actually seem to be of pretty decent quality and they do have grease in them. Uh, but the question that a lot of people had was what kind of grease? How much? Is it even the right grease? Uh, and that's always a good question, especially when you're sourcing these, these cheaper bearings. Um, because a lot of them are not like some of the more high quality bearings. Now here's a French bearing. Uh, this is actually a pretty good one. And, uh, but this has seen better days. This is, this one's pretty crunchy and a little rusted. We're going to take that apart and I'll show you. But what this video is about specifically is we're going to show you how to re-grease a bearing, uh, that has these, um, uh, that has this cap on it here. Okay. So these are sealed bearings. Uh, that are not really intended to be opened up and, and greased because they do it at the factory, but uh, they're meant to be used until they're dead and then you take them out and uh, replace them. However, you can take these, these little keepers, these lids, if you will, these seals on top, you can remove them and there's tools meant specifically for that. Um, now you can use all kinds of things. You can improvise, you can use a small jeweler screwdriver, you can use a pick, you can use a, a knife edge, although I would discourage you from using a knife to pry uh, with, with, with anything. But here's an example. Here's uh this one happens to be craftsman. Um, just one I've had for years. This one has kind of a unique little geometry on the tip. If you see it, it's, uh, has kind of this little double hook arrangement on it. Uh, these tend to work really good. Um, these go by many, many names. Um, if you, if you're friendly with a dentist and, uh, they've got a bunch of uh, dental picks that they toss, uh, uh, you can take one of those and grind them down to a pick. Uh, in the dental world, something like this would be called a curette. Uh, in the mechanical world, it'd be called a, a, a pick or a hook or an O-ring pick or an automotive pick. You can get them at uh, Lowe's, Home Depot. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy packs of various picks. You'll see all kinds of weird geometries. What you're looking for is something with a fairly sharp uh, tip and something that's got a little bit of a flat on it. And I'll show you why. Let me show you how to remove the seal so that you can regrease it. Uh, what you do is you want to get uh, this point you want to go from the inside, okay? So the inside of, of, you know, go find the seal and gently, don't poke a hole in the seal, get underneath the inner race. And you see what I'm doing? I'm just basically rolling underneath and it pops right off. Look at that, okay? Now, if you look, this, th this bearing, even though this is an overseas bearing, uh, this one actually, like I told you, I just want to show you, I wasn't fibbing. This one actually does have a fair amount of grease in it. it doesn't appear to be over greased. It's not the typical just white silicone goo you see in a lot of them or just oil. This is actually, it, it appears to be properly greased. Okay. So the bearing that I used in this case uh, does appear to be pretty decent. So I'm not going to do anything with this one. Uh, that bearing appears to be fine just the way it is. But you see, all you have to do is just push it back in and that's it. That sealed bearing is now sealed again. We haven't heard a thing and that's a way to get it off. Well, let me show you how to do it on a bearing that is pretty grumpy. So this is an old bearing. Seen better days. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to get right underneath the, just kind of go underneath the ID where the seal is, get underneath and then pop. There it comes. Okay. You can do that on both sides. Sometimes you'll see a different uh, cover on, on two sides, but uh, in this case, they're the same. Again, you don't want to poke a hole in the seal material. That's just going to cause trouble in the future. You want to get underneath the edge of it and then roll underneath and then pop the seal out, just like that. There you go. So now you can see Pretty crunchy. It is turning now because I forced it, but it's uh, it's pretty crunchy. So one of the first the first things that you should probably do is uh, clean it up a bit. I've got just an old uh, just an old rice cooker pot here. 
And uh, I'm just going to take some, uh, some brake cleaner. You can use many different things. Uh, some people use alcohol. I would discourage you from using acetone and alcohol and stuff like that because one, they're flammable. You really have to worry about uh, uh, working with stuff like that in a confined space or indoors. Um, this uh, brake cleaner actually is not flammable. Uh, this particular, uh, uh, the brake clean, uh, brake cleaner that a lot of people use, um, um, it's actually a, um, it's a different material. It is not flammable. Now, you don't want to breathe a bunch of it, so be careful. And you should wear some PPE. So I'm going to put on some gloves real quick. And we'll take a peek at what it takes to clean this out. Get these gloves on. Back in a second. All right, here we go. Here's a bearing, a little bit of brake cleaner. Yeah, I'm gonna make a mess, obviously. Just keep kind of rolling it around. You can see that junk coming out of there. And you don't have to go too crazy, you just wanna to try to get the bulk of the dirt and grit old crunchy grease there hear it now it's metal on metal in there we're starting to get everything out okay so i won't bore you with uh, the whole cleaning procedure i'll uh, go offline and, and uh, finish cleaning this up i'll be back in just a second You want to try to get as much of that out, dry it up. I'm just using some uh, compressed uh, air here, just uh, you know, canned air. Okay, that looks good. Clean these guys up. These are your covers that keep the grease in. Want to make sure you don't start off by regreasing this and then putting a dirty cap back on the, that already has dirt and grime on it. And again, you don't want to do this with a bearing that is super crunchy and worn to the point where it's super sloppy. But in this case, like this uh, this bearing, again, just a random one that I grabbed from the trash, but um, this one was worn, but there's not a lot of movement between the inner and outer race. It seems to have cleaned up pretty decent. This one probably still has a little life in it. So what we're gonna do now, let's put this aside. Okay. Again, do this in a well-ventilated area. I am in a well-ventilated area here. And uh, so now, now we have the cleaned up bearing. Sounds good, looks good. Got all the dirt out of there. Caps are ready to go. And what we wanna do is choose a grease and wanna pack the grease back in here. And the way we do that, in this case, I'm just gonna grab any other little random tool I've got that I can use kind of as a little spatula. This one looks nice, like a little trowel. And I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to put a little, uh, get a piece of paper towel. Inside this grease cartridge, I have Lucas, uh, the red tacky, number two. I'm just going to put a little on here, just to make it a little easier. Now, common mistake that people make is overpacking these bearings. You don't want to do that. You don't want to overpack these. As a matter of fact, what happens is if you put too much grease inside here, if you just, just smash it in and level it off and snap these on, it's going to look fine. And you're going to go like this and go, oh yeah, that's great. I can feel the grease in there. It's working good. Problem is bearings aren't really meant to work that way. They really should only be filled about 25% uh, because you have the inner race, the outer race, You've got the cage that holds these ball bearings all in their relative positions here so they don't touch one another. Um, and um, the grease, you know, the bearings are inside of that cage, obviously. And what you want to do is you want to just get it in there so that there's grease in the between the inner and the outer race, obviously, and, and saturated throughout the cage and the bearings. But you don't want it completely gunked up. You don't want it completely filled because what ends up happening after this, after, you know, they say 25 uh, percent is optimal, 50% for certain bearings, like lower speed bearings or certain types of bearings. Um, but as soon as you get above, say, you know, filled up by a quarter or a third, in, in most cases, what happens is if you have too much grease in there, uh, the, there's, there's actually friction. <laughs> 
the, the bearing, especially if it's spinning really fast, it has to plow through all that grease, the race, um, you know, the bearings, the cage, everything has to move through that grease. That grease actually creates a little frictional heat and it will thin it out. It will spin it out and uh, and actually create more uh, more of a problem than they solve. So what you want to do is get a little grease on there and work it in. I'm just going to trowel a little in here. Nothing fancy. Okay, just keep rotating it as you as you move it around. Um, it's obviously going to uh, work its way into the cage and the bearings. So I'm just going to spin it around here. Um, some people will just use it, use their finger like this. I'll do that with the other side. Okay. Again, get some in there, but don't gob tons and tons of it in. Okay. And then spin it around. There we go. What you're looking for, you want to make sure that the grease has made it into the cage and into the bearings and it's inside of the bearing race, but you don't want a whole lot of extra. You want a little bit, but you don't want too much. Okay. There we go. Check the other side. Put a little bit more in there, but not too much. Again, you're, it's hard to really, you know, some people might say, what the heck is 25% fill mean? Well, it's not perfect, but you want to try to get it where you're obviously not filling the entire void with grease. You want grease to be saturated throughout the bearing and cage area, definitely throughout both races, but you don't want a ton of extra in there, okay? Put just a dab more. And give her a spin. There we go. Okay. You can see right here. It's good and greased. Sounds good. Looks good. Now we're going to snap these covers back on. This goes really easy. Simply push them back in. You don't have to pry or anything. They'll just snap back in. Make sure you have the, if there's a metallic portion showing, some of these are pure rubber. Some have a metal sleeve. The metal sleeve faces down, just the rubber faces up on this particular type of bearing. So pay attention when you, um, when you take them apart, push them in, make sure they actually snap right down in there. Okay. That did good. Beauty. Clean it up. Okay, on this particular one, I chose the red uh, tacky Lucas. Uh, that's a pretty popular all-purpose grease. Works pretty good for most applications. One of my favorites. Uh, we even had some comments from some some other viewers who mentioned uh, Lucas products. I do like Lucas, like I said. So use that for this demo. And that's it. That is how you remove the, the top from these uh, sealed bearings. Gently clean and re-grease. Put them back together. And that's got some more miles on it now, ready to go. There you go. Thanks for tuning in to Half Moon Tech Labs. Hope that helped. Take care.